Let's talk about the dynamics of a rope running over a block. When rope is tested and rated, it's done so where all the fibers are loaded equally, like on a straight pull, for example. Now, when a rope is bent over a radius, we have a different dynamic happening. The fibers on the outside of the bend radius are under tension. The fibers on the inside of the bend radius are under compression. A rope functions only under tension. The fibers do no work under compression. Therefore, at this point, the system is weakened. A rule of thumb that's used in our industry and many industries really is that a rope should be bent when it needs to be bent over an object. The ratio of the diameter of the object to the rope diameter should be at least four to one. Now, if that were a larger radius, it would be even better. But for practicality's sake, four to one is acceptable. Note that there will be approximately a 15% strength loss even here with a four to one bend radius. Let's talk about rope angle and loading a rope and different ways of loading a rope. Here we've got a 50 pound piece of wood sitting on and attached to two parts of the rope. And our force at the block in this case, or it would be a limb or a friction saver, what have you, is the same as the weight of the climber or in this case, the piece of wood. Now in a rigging operation, the ropes are loaded or the parts of the rope are loaded in a different way. When I raise the 50 pound piece of wood above the ground here, if I were to say attach the rope to the porter app here, or in other words, the parts of the rope were parallel, and we'll call this zero degrees, the force at the block in this case is two to one or 100 pounds. Now, as we increase the rope angle, as I back away, the force at the block will decrease. Now, this might occur, for example, if we're able to redirect the line. As the angle increases, the bend radius also increases, and that's a positive factor. If we were able to increase the bend radius to 120 degrees, the force at the block would then reduce to the weight of the piece, or 50 pounds in this case. If we were to set a false crotch by throwing a throw line up into a tree over a limb and then pulling a block attached to one rope up into the tree with an additional rigging line run through that block, we have to be aware of the reaction forces on the limb and the block. We've reenacted that here by hoisting one pulley up, in this case through a block, so that we can measure these forces. Now, one end of the rigging line holding the block above is anchored at the porter app. We have the rope passed through the pulley. So we're, we'll actually have four parts of rope acting on the pulley and the dynamometer above. Our, our load is 50 pounds. As I raise the 50 pound load with the rigging line, you see that our force is actually 200 pounds. The reaction force is a force that we must be aware of. We have four parts of the rope now acting on the block and the dynamometer. If I have 50 pounds of wood here, I'll have 50 pounds of force in both parts in the, of the blue rope. Now, where the pulley is attached to the yellow double braid with the carabiner, we have 100 pounds of force. And then to hold that, we have 100 pounds of force in the other side of the rope. That will give us 200 pounds or a four to one ratio at the block. 